Today's project is going to be refinishing these Brembo calipers off of a 2004 Mitsubishi Evolution 8. As you can see, they look bad. They need our help. And we're going to get started by taking some measurements of these original logos, exactly length and width. That way, when we're reproducing them, on the new finished calipers we'll know exactly what size they were originally and what size they need to be. The process that I'm going to try to follow is I'm going to try to strip the powder coat off without separating the two halves of the caliper. I'm going to try that first see how that goes. If it doesn't work out and we do have to separate both halves of each caliper we'll go ahead and do that. My goal is to have a brand new looking part I will not be returning them back to the red finish and I want to try to avoid the powder coat altogether. It's very difficult to get off. Once it gets messed up, it looks really bad. I think we can do probably a better job of just removing the powder coat, polishing the aluminum to a, a bright finish and even get away from painting the logo back on. My intention to try to get the logo to to pop is to leave it at 80 grit and then polish everything around it that should give us a difference in surface appearance and give us the illusion that the logo is there even though it's just merely a texture difference in the end we're going to clear coat the whole thing with a it is uv resistant that way we should get several years of life out of it before they start to fade and, and need redoing anyway guys if you like the videos that i've been putting out make sure to subscribe to the channel give me a thumbs up if you like this video make sure to turn on your notification bells and leave me comments i love the comments i do my best to respond as soon as i can thank you so much for all the support the channel has been steadily growing and as it grows it's going to help me to continue to put these videos out for you, pass along what I've learned, and help you guys out through any issues that you're running into. All right, I wanted to point out something. If you're planning on vapor blasting or sand blasting, anything that has threaded parts, I recommend that you plug those threaded parts either with some type of a piece of foam, tape, cardboard, something. Or you can you can uh, print up some some 3D printed bolts and just just screw them on there. The reason you want to do this is because media is difficult to get out of threads, and uh, once you're all done and you're reassembling the car, you're gonna if you left any media in there, what's gonna happen is it's it's gonna cause problems with with the bolt and you could possibly strip out the aluminum part that you're threading into because the bolts are uh, steel. So you got to make sure that the parts that you're threading in go all the way all the way to the edge. So as you're blasting, you're not going to get any media inside any of those threads, okay? The same thing goes with the 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 part that the brake line goes to. You got to something threaded piece of foam, tape, cardboard, something to get in there to make sure that you don't have those those problems. Okay, this will save you a lot of hassle later on. I've spent hours retapping and cleaning and blowing out media out of threaded areas. Uh, the same thing goes with the bolts too. If if you're going to sandblast or, or wet blast the bolts, you got to make sure you get all of that media out of those threads. In, in my case, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tape up the thread threaded part and just... Uh, vapor blast the heads of the bolts. I'm not going to bother messing with the threaded parts. Yeah, it'll look nicer if the whole thing is the same, nice, even, spotless finish, but cleaning out those threads is a real hassle. All right, guys, hope that helps you. Let's get to the vapor blast cabinet. All right, guys, we're going to get started by using the extra fine glass bead media, and I'm going to lower the pressure to To about uh, 30 psi because I don't want to strip the finish off those parts. So 
30 PSI should be good for cleaning. I'm pretty sure that these parts are coated with something, so I don't want to remove that coating, otherwise it'll, it'll just rust. Now this is the version 3 nozzle with an 8 millimeter tip that we're going to be trying out. So let me turn on the vacuum and the water pump and we'll get started. The hardware came out excellent. What I did is I blasted these treated pieces at 30 PSI with extra fine glass bead media. And then I was going to do the same with the pins. And after a few minutes of blasting on them, I noticed that the pins are actually stainless steel. So I went ahead and bumped up the pressure to 50 PSI and got these, these pins pretty much spotless. Spotless, brand new. Next up is the 36 grit garnet, and we'll be blasting at 50 psi using the version 3 nozzle with uh, an 8 millimeter tip. We'll see what it does with the big media. Visibility is probably going to be lousy. 36 grit garnet is so big, it's, it's about the size of coffee grinds, so it's going to muddy up the glass here real fast. But this will be the test for the vinyl coating that we have on the glass right now we'll see if it can withstand the garnet bouncing off of it and whether or not the garnet's going to tear it up also uh, another thing uh, that we want to check out is to see if the garnet is going to damage the 3d printed gun i would imagine over time it's going to wear it out but uh, i want to see how long it will go before failing on us Okay, we switch now to a 9mm tip in the version 3 nozzle. Again, 36 grit garnet, 50 psi.
after a few hours of blasting with the 36 grit garnet uh, this is where we're at now this is a very slow process i mean it does take it off i think what i'm going to try to do to try to loosen up this finish a little bit is to um, use some aircraft stripper on it but you you can you can clean this without taking it apart um it's it's hard to get in all these little crevices you do have to spend some time but i think if we hit this whole piece with the aircraft stripper uh we might loosen it enough to where it'll just come right off but i mean you you can you can do it with just vapor blasting alone it just takes a very long time here's an update on the way that stripping the powder coat worked for me what i did is i went to walmart and i picked up a box of ziploc big bags these are 10 gallon size bags they're huge and the bags are thick enough and are also resistant to the rust-oleum aircraft remover that i'm using what you see here is a shoe box so this is a plastic shoe box that i picked up at walmart as well they come in a pack of i believe it's seven fairly inexpensive I use the block of wood to just take up uh, interior space. That way I'm not wasting stripper uh, by adding more stripper than I need. Now what I'm going to do is I've already done one of the front calipers. It's already been sitting overnight and uh, there's a lot of bubbling. It looks really good. So all I'm going to do next is clean it up, take it to the vapor blast cabinet and knock off the powder coat with the 36 grit garnet. I'll go ahead and grab the last caliper put it in the bag and show you guys exactly how I did it. Now I let this thing sit overnight. 30, 40 minutes didn't do anything. Two hours didn't do anything. Overnight I started to see a lot of action and, I, and uh, changes to the surface of the powder coat. And that's it. So now just leave it alone, uh, preferably overnight. And in the morning when you come out, it should be good to go. Right now it, it is the morning, so I'll probably leave it all day today. Probably start working on it, I don't know, maybe 11 o'clock, midnight maybe. I'll, I'll check on it and see. The Rust-Oleum stripper is really nasty. Make sure you wear rubber gloves, uh, eye protection. Uh, make sure you're working with this in a well ventilated it's windy outside today if you're working in any kind of a uh, enclosed space don't do it make sure you got some kind of cross breeze fan going wear a respirator this stuff is really bad for you i got the part propped up on a milk crate just to get a little bit higher up off the base i was having a hard time with it and this one is heavy All right, guys, all done. 
Let's open it up and see what we got in there. All right, guys, here it is. So now all four of the calipers are stripped. Now, next thing we need to do is pull this second one apart and then do any little spot cleaning that needs to be done inside. So what you're gonna need to take these bolts off is a 10 millimeter Allen, and this is for a 2004 Mitsubishi Evolution. And these bolts are very tight, so you're gonna need a, a breaker bar. But before you take these bolts off, we need to remove the this line that joins the two halves together. And what I've seen online is a lot of guys having a hard time taking this off because it, it is very tight. And that's because they're using the wrong type of tool. They're using a standard open end wrench. But what you need is you need a flare nut wrench. So this wrench wraps around and grabs extra material because these flare nuts are usually tightened very tight for the size of nut that it's using. So in this case, it's a 10 millimeter. So if you were to try to do this with just a standard open end wrench, there's a very high chance that you're going to strip it because it is very tight. So get yourself the right tools and then you won't have any problems. So the reason this notch is cut out is so you can go around the uh, pipe. Anyway, righty tighty, lefty loosey. So you'll see how tight it is. And it is going to drip some fluid. These bolts are really tight, so you're gonna you're gonna need some kind of a breaker bar. I like to start with the inside ones first, and then uh, break the outside ones. You see these guys anti seize lubricant, so we got to make sure that we apply the anti seize lu anti seize lubricant back on this bolt. Now these are these are machine surfaces, so if, when these things are put together, they fit very very tight so you want to take care and protect these surfaces to make sure that they don't get damaged so what i'm going to do is because i don't want to blast any kind of media on this i'm going to cover them up if you see the pink ones over there so that's just some pink vinyl that i'll probably never use just tape it across here to protect these and then on the halves that have the threads it's important that you put something in the threads especially working with the extra fine grit media because that stuff gets in there and it's very hard to get it out and it could cause you problems when you're reassembling it. So what I did for the threads is I made up some 
3D printed parts here. So this will thread into that piece there on the end. So it goes all the way through the sleeve, threads in, and then it covers the threads completely on the other side. So I'll show you what that looks like. So what I'll do, guys, is I'll put links to all of these 3D printed parts, the STL files. That way, if you guys have a Mitsubishi Evolution 8, and I believe the, the Evo 7, 8, 9, and even the 10 use the same uh, Brembo setup, you can use these. So these are, what's the size of these? 12 millimeter by 1.75 pitch and then these are the ones that hold the little retainer that keeps the brake pads in place so when you take the little metal piece out you want to make sure you protect the threads All right but you can see on this side they come through they're not going to interfere with me polishing because there's no there's no heads the heads are on this side so i'm not going to be doing anything to these machine surfaces anyway And then on this one, same thing. So you have these little 3D printed bolts here to secure these threads, make sure that no media gets in there. And the same thing here. So if you look on this side, some 3D printed uh, bolts. I also 3D printed the cap to protect the threads and not get any media inside of the cavity here where the brake fluid goes same thing on this side so this is the bar that goes across from one half to the other another little 3d printed cap and then we got caps to protect these sleeves in here these sleeves are treated with uh that that same black i guess it's a primer that they use and i want to make sure that it doesn't uh, i don't get rid of that primer because that primer keeps the bolt should it rust from sticking to the aluminum body all right so that's those pieces there and then on the cross piece same thing you don't want to get any media on your threads and you don't want to get any media inside of this so as i'm blasting this to polish it up i had to protect this so these are, again, more 3D printed caps. I'll go ahead and include all these STL files. You guys can get them for free. They'll be in the description. Another thing I recommend you doing is taking your the big bolts that hold the front calipers together and run a, a die on them. To clean up these threads because they got rust and all kinds of junk just from uh, the weather now these parts over this part over here is okay but the end right here is all rusty and as you start to put the dye it, it starts to bind so you can see that it binds so you just want to make sure you just run your dye on it and you can see the rust coming off and you want to make sure you do this for all four of these bolts Once you got them all cleaned up, just back it back out, and you're good to go. It's these little steps that you take that are going to avoid problems later on. All right, so I'm going to do that for all four of the bolts. And tomorrow's going to be exciting. Tomorrow we're going to start polishing up all these pieces. I just have a little bit more touching up to do on this one with the 36-grit garnet. And then we'll load the 80-grit glass bead and start the polishing. Another thing too is make sure that you keep the two halves that go together together. So that one is the right front. That's the set. You don't want to mix them up because the, the, these machine surfaces are machined in a certain way. So they made together. So that's a set. This is another set. And then keep all the, the hardware for the fronts 
and then the hardware for the rears all organized. That way, when you were reassembling all this stuff, we don't have to be searching for any bolts and things that you, you, you may have misplaced. Next thing we've got to do is uh, break the bolts loose on the rear calipers. And the size that it uses is a six millimeter Allen. So get yourself a nice breaker bar. So again, anti-seize lubricant. Here's another thing too, guys. Check it out. So you got two different size bolts here. All right? And you can tell because this is a narrower. So just make sure that, take note that these are different size bolts so you don't make any mistakes when you're putting it back together. Same thing with these, okay? You're going to have to get a tap or a die. Run a die on this. Clean off these threads. Also, I just noticed here too. So this, this half here, the rear calipers, they have an O-ring. See that little O-ring there? So make sure you don't lose that O-ring because you're going to need it when you reassemble it. That's what seals the two halves. So there it is, the tiny little, tiny little O-ring. All right. Here's where we are so far. We got everything stripped and vapor blasted with the 36 grit garnet. So here are all the parts. We got most of the hardware done. We got the rears. All their hardware. Next thing we're going to do is unload the garnet, load in 80 grit glass bead, and start polishing. We'll also work on the hardware as we go, clean that up, and then uh, clear coat everything. Finally, we get to polish. Currently loaded in the machine is 80 grit glass bead. We'll be blasting at 50 PSI. Let's turn on the vacuum and water pump and we'll get going. Oh, by the way, I want to give you guys an update. I've been blasting for four days with 36 grit garnet. Four or five hours a day to get all this powder coat off. And uh, just, to give you a, just to give you a view of the glass. All right, so here's the... Here's the glass, aside from a few water spots that are still on the inside because I got very hard water. Let me show you on the inside. So the, the garnet didn't do anything to the glass. These are This is just water spots. Didn't do anything to the, to the vinyl, nothing. It's amazing. So this works great, guys. Get yourself some paint protective vinyl. It's a 3M product. I got mine from Vivid. I guess they buy like a big giant spool and they cut it into smaller sections mine was 15 by 23 and i want to say it was like 15 bucks anyhow it works save yourself a lot of hassle and stop spending your money on those stupid little films that you have to replace every five minutes all right let's get going In this step, what we're going to do is take a picture of the front and rear caliper parts that are going to get the logo. Make sure you're directly overhead. Give yourself enough distance to keep the lens from distorting the actual dimensions of the caliper. And... What we're going to do is import this picture into GIMP. We're going to launch GIMP, double click it. Once GIMP is open, 
We're going to navigate over to where our picture is and open each one of the pictures. Once our picture is open, we're going to head over to the lasso tool. And then we're going to begin to create a edge around the piece that we're going to be working with. In this case, it's going to be the caliper. So we only want to bring the caliper in only. We are not interested in bringing in the background. And that's why this step is important. Keep following the edge until we get all the way around the caliper. And then once we get to the end, we're going to click on Edit, Copy, Edit again, Paste as New Image. From here, we're going to adjust the image. If you notice, it's a little bit crooked. So we're going to go over to the Rotate tool, select the item, and then do some small adjustments by using the little arrows up and down till we get the picture as straight in its square as possible, or rectangle in this case. Once we're happy with the position, we're going to select the background by using the Magic Wand tool. We're going to invert the selection, copy, and then paste as new image. This will give us a centered rectangle that now we can export. So click File, Export As, give it a name, in this case it's going to be Front, and select the file type. It's already defaulted to JPG. We're going to leave it like that. Change the quality to 100%. Click Export. And do the same with the rear caliper. Now, Next step is we're going to import these items into Cricut Design Space. So once we got our Cricut uh, Design Space open, we're going to import the one image into our current project. Change the tolerance to 70. And then select the background that we want to get rid of. Click Continue, and we're going to select Print, then Cut, because we want a picture of the image actually in our file. So now we're going to head back to our project. We're going to click on Import Image, and here I've already started working on it, but this will give you an idea of how to bring the picture that you just took into the project. To locate the logos, I did the same thing. I just did a Google search for Brembo logo downloaded it, and then brought it into the project. Now this part is important because to get the proportions correct, we're going to need to take one of the measurements of each of these calipers. In this case, I did the height. So I measured the height at 8.2 centimeters on the front caliper. So once you have it selected, what we're going to do is head over to the top, make sure that the proportion lock is engaged and we're going to change this value to 8.2 once we do that it's going to resize the caliper to the to the to the right size to match up with the logo that we're going to work with now this i've already done the resizing to the logo as well so i took a measurement of the original logos to, to uh, know what size they were from the factory. Now, I think this Brembo logo could be a little bit bigger. I think it's a little small. So I think what I'm going to do with it is I'm going to make a small adjustment once I line everything up and I look at it. Yeah, I think it, I think it could be a little bit bigger. So I'm going to select the logo, and I'm going to change. I'm not going to unlock the, the ratio, the aspect ratio lock. I'm going to leave that alone, but I'm going to increase the number just a little bit. Then I'm going to go ahead and align it again. It looks good. And then we need to lock, lock these in place. So we're going to select them both. Make sure that it's uh, centered again if you made any movements. So 
So what we're going to do is we're going to select our front caliper group. We're going to ungroup it and we're going to delete the caliper picture. Ungroup the rear one. Now we're going to click on the caliper, delete it. So you can you do, just press the delete key and it'll get rid of it. Because all we're going to be interested in is the logos. All right, so now we got our logos. Now we can go ahead and click on make it. Now we're going to change the, the project copies to two. And then click apply. And if we need to arrange any of these to make better use of our vinyl, then we can do that. I like to put these closer together, away from the edge, one on top of the other. That way they're easier to cut out. All right, perfect. I'm going to click on continue. And in this section, you're going to select the type of machine we're using. In this case, I'm using the Cricut Maker. I'm going to select the material type, which is vinyl. And then now we're going to head over to the machine, load the mat, and have it cut it out. Super excited. We're polishing today. I got the Brembo logo all loaded up on the rear caliper. And I want to see if we can get a texture difference that's significant enough to where we won't have to paint on the logo or use a decal. So I'm hoping that it will just be a, a, a texture difference. And that it will be enough that it will be still it'll, noticeable. So anyway, let's we're going to polish everything around the Brembo. And once everything is all polished, we'll remove the Brembo. And it should be a lighter color than the polish. So it's going to be a subtle thing. It's not going to be an in-your-face, popping out white logo or black logo. It will just be subtle. But I'm hoping that it's going to look real good.
Okay, we got one of the big calipers in the vapor blaster right now. We're going to polish it. Everything except for the letters, which is protected by the vinyl. 50 PSI, extra fine glass bead media. What I plan to do here is to grind off this knurling on the side, make it smooth, and then go through different stages of sandpaper so that we can get this to a mirror polish. The inside, we're not going to be able to do much with the inside. I guess we could stick a Q-tip in there with some polishing compound or something, but uh, I'm not too worried about the inside. For me, the outside is the key. I may I may vapor blast it real quick just to get that rust out and then uh, treat it. So what I'll do is I'll do that real quick before getting into the polishing. But let me show you this issue that I had, all right? I need to hold this bolt into the drill press on the thread side. But I don't want to just put this in the chuck and then clamp it down and just start going to town on it because I'm going to damage these threads and these threads have to go into this aluminum that holds the caliper halves together and I, I don't want to damage them now what what I came up with is a it's a little 3d printed collar it's threaded on the inside same pitch as the 12 millimeter bolts it's got some slits on the side so that these three little pieces will will give some and the drill press has three jaws on it that are set the same way so the plan is to thread this in here so put the collar on insert the collar inside the chuck tighten the chuck down and uh, then we can go to work on these using the drill press to spin it around. Let me clean these up real quick and then we'll get started on the polishing. 
this is what we're going to be using to polish this up. We're going to start off with a file to get off this knurling. Once we get the knurl off, next step is going to be 180 grit sandpaper. Then follow up with 320 grit sandpaper. 600 grit sandpaper. 1200 grit. 2000 and then we're going to polish with Meguiar's Ultimate Compound on a little rag. This is what we want. Okay. That's the part that takes the longest. The rest of it is pretty fast. I could still use a little bit more work, but you can see, right, much nicer than this one. So I'll keep working on this, do the rest of them, and then I'll show you guys where we're at. Yeah, it looks like I missed a couple spots. Anyhow, let me knock this out, get it real shiny, and then I'll go over all the hardware that's completed and what's left to be done. Next thing we're going to need to do is treat the heads of these polished bolts, both for the front and rear calipers. The sand blasting, vapor blasting, has taken away the protective coating on them. So now that we got them looking real nice, they'll look nice, but they'll rust. So we need to do something to them to keep them from rusting. And a product that I found that looks very promising is... Uh, called shark hide it's a metal protectant and it works on different kinds of metals i talked to the manufacturer and the coating will hold up for several years it's similar to a clear coat but unlike a clear coat that's just a surface layer this bonds to the metal so i don't have to worry about having a certain type of a grit finish on it or primer or anything like that you just spray it directly on the clean metal you have to clean the metal with acetone prior to spraying it but it does penetrate the surface layer of the metal keeping it from rusting and it lasts for several years so i think if i can keep the bolts looking good for three or four years that's good enough for me and then by around that time uh, the calipers may need some work but I'm going to go ahead and spray this. You need to be outside. The fumes of this are really nasty. First, direction to say first coat is about 12 inches away. Followed up by another coat uh, 8 inches away. And the first coat being a light coat. And then the follow-up coat being a little bit heavier. You don't want to create runs or anything, but a good second coat will, will work. All right, let me go knock this out. And then we'll uh, start taking the seals out of these these uh, calipers. Anyway, you can see how they turned out. They look great. I'm super excited. Can't wait to get them in the car. Uh, what I did here, guys, for this, for these pieces here, for these little uh, tubes that, that go across, I used the same process that I used on the bolts, so the different stages of sandpaper, and I just sanded these by hand. It is very tedious if you do have a Dremel tool that you can use that would probably be better 
Uh, but it wasn't it wasn't too bad doing it by hand. I think it came out really nice. And uh, this material, I'm not sure what it is, but it doesn't rust. So just polishing it and just leaving it like that is gonna be okay. And you know what? I may I may just spray it with the, uh, the shark eye just for giggles. Okay, I'll be right back. If you have some bolts that have crud on the ends like these, there's a little bit of powder coat left on there and some rust. The, these ends will also have to be treated with the shark hide. What I'm going to do is just clean them up using a little uh, stainless steel brush right here. And they come out real nice. So once you hit it with a little stainless steel brush, you can clean them up pretty good. And then just wipe them down with a little acetone and spray the tips with the shark hide. And that should give it a good level of protection. In this step, what we're going to do is remove the pistons from inside of the caliper half. In the shop manual, they don't recommend that you take these things apart at all. And it says to insert a block of wood, 2 by 4 in inside the caliper, and then add air through the fitting side to get the two pist the four pistons to, to, to clamp onto the piece of wood, right? Well, we pulled these apart. And the reason that I didn't remove the pistons early on is I didn't want the chance of getting media inside of the piston bore or in any of the orifices. So I opted to keep these in until I was all done with all the vapor blasting before the paint and then go ahead and work on this. Uh, so that's the step that I'm at. But I wanted to give you guys an update on what happened to me earlier today when working with that one. Okay. So that one used to look like this one. The logo was already on. It was ready to go. And this is etched into the aluminum. All right. It's not a sticker. It's not paint. It's etched. And I'm going to do the same thing with that one. But what happened with this one is I, I actuated it with air. And when I put, put the air in, one of the pistons, the big piston, I got caps on it now because they're out. The big piston popped out all the way out. The little piston did not pop out. And this thing pops out with a lot of force too. I looked at uh, how this thing was set up, and then I, I decided to reinsert the big piston. Now, when it originally popped out, it also sprayed brake fluid all over the place. We got to have some kind of a block of wood uh, underneath this. So this, this block of wood is uh, three-quarters of an inch. A two-by-four is about one-and-a-half inch. And if the shop manual calls for a two-by-four to be put in between the, the pistons, Half of a caliper would be three quarters of an inch. So I think this is the perfect size. And uh, But I'm going to clamp the caliper. I'm going to sandwich the caliper. Uh, underneath is going to be a two by four. This is going to be in the middle. The caliper is going to be on top, and I'm going to clamp it. And then what I did is I 3D printed this little this little adapter here, okay? So this thing, turn the light on so you can see. So this little adapter will screw on the uh, brake line side, and then a clear hose will push onto, onto this fitting. So I could push the clear hose onto this fitting, this will be screwed into the brake caliper half. And then I'm going to use my air nozzle with a little bit of tape to take up some slack. And I'm going to slowly eject the pistons. All right, so let's see how it goes this time. Okay. 
It's raining outside, guys. All right, so you can see it there. All right, guys, hopefully you can see that. All right, so I got my air. My, uh, so I'm just gonna just slowly add, slowly add a little bit of air and they should, they should come out. See? That's the way it was supposed to go the first time. So if you do it that way, you're not gonna have any problems. You see? See how they're out? Now all we gotta do now is just pull them out. No brake fluid sprayed anywhere. Nothing. So don't do what I did. Okay, this is what I just learned. That weird blotching that I was talking about, you see how it just happened here again? So this is this is brake fluid. So the brake fluid is reacting with this aluminum. I don't know why this is happening. But it's reacting with the uh, with the aluminum, so you can see it. It blotched up the the letter here a little bit. Um, so what I would do different is blast everything with extra fine glass bead media, but don't do do the logo last. That that's what I would do different. I wouldn't mess with the logo now because if it does stain like here, you see. See how this is all brown and nasty now? So I got to get that off. The only way to get it off is to vapor blast it again with the extra fine glass bead media, and that will restore the finish again. So I want to make sure that I finish everything having to do with removing the old brake fluid from here. Uh, that way I don't have, I don't have uh, the risk of this happening. But anyway, let me get back to, to, to this so I'm, I don't keep ranting here. So th this this thing is actually very simple. There's really not much to uh, this thing. In in here, there's a there's a little seal. And let me show you what I so, so what I did is I took a credit uh, not a credit card but like a gift card, and I cut out a little sliver of the gift card. All right, so I just cut out a little sliver, and then what I made on the end here is a little hook. So I just bent it, making this little hook. Because I didn't want to use any kind of metal tools inside of here because this bore is not supposed to be all scratched up or anything. Uh, so I made this little tool. And let me see if I, you guys can see here. So what I do to, to use the tool is I get it up underneath. So you can see right there I'm, I'm underneath it. And then I'll just I'll work it until I can get it under the... It's hard to do while I'm filming here, but I'm going to try to get under it. So just keep working it until you get it out. See? See how it just popped out? And where it sits, it sits inside this groove. And you see there's extra fine glass bead media in there. So you got to make sure you get, above, get all this out of there. You see that groove in there? So this thing... Sorry about the shaky camera. So this thing sits inside that groove. Just like that. Okay? So to reinsert the new one, all you're doing is wetting this uh, rubber O-ring with brake fluid and then putting it in that putting it back in this little groove. Super simple. I mean, there's nothing to this, really. But you want to make sure you get all that glass bead out of there. And if you notice... I don't know if you can see that in the video. Turn the lights. At the very bottom in the corner... Right here in this corner, right down here... There's a tiny little hole. 
and the hole is maybe an eighth of an inch. You might be able to see it better on this one. Yeah, right here. So you see that little hole right there? So that's about an eighth of an inch hole. The fluid passes from this hole, this hole on this side, which is the side where the where the fitting was. So it goes, it's it's perfectly in line. It's perfectly in line with the position of that hole. So they drill from here with that same size right there all the way through into here into this side and then you can barely see it right there and then it goes across to this side comes out on this side right there where I'm pointing and then out this side and out the bleeder valve so that that's I mean that's it this thing is super there's nothing that can go wrong with this really I was intimidated by this whole thing at first thinking oh man what if I screw it up what if it if I don't get something right dude you can't mess this up really I mean it's so simple and then the the little this little thing all you're doing is pushing it into this little groove. So you see, it has uh, it has a little metal ring built into this rubber, and it fits perfectly into here. You just push it in there. The piston will have a little groove, this groove right here, that fits this rubber. So what you can do, actually, before you even push the piston in, is put the rubber piece on, get it in place and then put the piston in and then push it down into that into its little space here right so you're just setting it in there pushing it down all the way down and then setting this seal into this groove that's it super simple all right so what i'm gonna have to do now with this one is the same thing i did with the first one i'm gonna have to erase the logo clean it all back up clean uh get this all painted and ready to go actually before i paint it i'm gonna reapply the logo so i'm just gonna finish cleaning this out get all that media out of there vapor blast this again and i'm gonna get them all done i'll do all the the, the brake calipers and once they're all done before paint i'll reapply the logo and then do the clear coat and that should resolve all the problems anyhow uh Excuse the rant. I just wanted to make sure that you guys don't make these mistakes. There's a reason for doing things a certain way. And uh, this was a mistake. I should have done this last. Because now i got to take it off. And anyway, it's a little bit more of a hassle. All right, guys. I'm going to go ahead and knock out the rest of these. The small rear calipers are the same thing. You're going to apply air. I mean, if you want, I'll show you that, that, that part. That way you guys can see everything. All right, we cleaned it all up. So there it is. The logo's gone. We're going to have to reapply it later. All right, it's all nice and clean on the inside. I'm going to go ahead and do the rest of them. I'll show you the back half of this because it is a little bit different. All right, we're going to do the same thing with this one. The only thing I did different is I changed the, the piece of wood. So this wood is a little bit thinner than the other piece of wood. Hopefully we can get those pistons to come out a little bit further. All right, got that thing in. Let's put the thin piece of wood underneath. Put the two by four under there. Glasses just in case. I don't know if you're seeing there. Let 
Here we go. Success. Let's see if they came out further. Yeah, look, they popped right out of the boot. So let's see. Oh, yeah. Much better. Easy. All right, guys, so that's the ticket. Let me measure this piece of wood and I'll tell you what size you need. So this thing is just under 5 8. So that's what you need. 5 8 actually might do it, but if it's, uh, I gotta find out where I got this wood. But anyway, it's, it's a 16th of an inch under 5 8. So if you use this same piece of wood, It'll, it'll pop the pistons all the way out. And all you have to do is just wiggle them a little and they, they just come right out. Anyway, that was a piece of cake compared to the first one. We're getting better every time. All right, let me clean this part up and uh, we'll get to the next step. Staining that was occurring with the brake fluid reacting with the particular degreaser that I was using. In the end, I wound up having to buy some formula 88 and the formula 88 worked great okay here we are round two of the logo getting ready to put it in the blast cabinet this is the way you need to do it if you're going to etch uh from a polish and then you want to etch to a coarser grit media so you would have to have it uh, inverted this way when i first did it on the initial run I covered the coarser finish and polished around it. That's why it looks different this time than the last time. All right, let me load it up in the cabinet. Currently in the cabinet is 80 grit glass bead media. We'll be blasting at 50 PSI. So let's get this thing going. Guys, our logo came off. Hopefully, it's didn't get it, didn't mess it up. Okay, guys, the first way didn't work because the stencil had areas that were so thin that the pressure from the nozzle blasted it off. So, what I'm going to try to do now is I left this one whole section open. So I'm going to hit that whole section with 80 grit glass bead media and make that whole section dull. And then I'm going to try to, I'm going to do the same thing with, with the next piece. Then what I'll do is I'll reload the fine, uh, extra fine glass bead media back into the machine. Apply the logo the right way with the thicker letters because it's going to adhere better. And then polish uh the rest of the area so it should it shouldn't be that bad i'm hoping it won't be that bad but i'm gonna go ahead and just blast this little area here and then uh apply the sticker the right way i'll now show you guys how i do that and hopefully we can straighten this thing out Uh, what I did is I just taped around the area where the the, lo the new logo was going to go and I, I masked off the rest of it and I vapor blasted only with 80 grit glass bead so that gave me this uh, 
uh, rougher texture square. I then went ahead and applied the, the logo the right way instead of the negative of this logo because it has more vinyl gripping the surface as opposed to just these little slivers of material. And uh, anyway, I put it in the, in the cabinet. So this is essentially the way I did it originally. It's the whole thing was this color. And then I applied the logo and then polished everything around the logo and then peeled off the vinyl and revealed the uh, etched Brembo logo. So I already did one. Let me show you how, how it looked. And we'll go ahead and and reveal it for you. Okay, so this one was this one was the other one that, that had gotten messed up. So both of them, I messed them up with the staining that was occurring. With the brake fluid reacting with the particular degreaser that I was using. And then the the one that caused me the problems was a uh was a, the super clean from Walmart. This one was the one that reacted with the brake fluid and caused the staining all over the caliper. All right, well let me uh go ahead and peel these off so you can see. The nice thing about having it etched is that it's not going to fade or rub off like the powder coat, the painted uh, logo over the powder coat. And what I'm thinking is that when I apply the clear coat to it, the logo is going to get a little bit dark. I've never seen anybody do this. I think I thought it was a it was really cool when I was doing it on the glass bottles and I knew that it would work on the uh, on any, on anything anything metal because you could play around with the different grits to get different effects. So you have it guys. So that's uh it's, it's etched into the polished aluminum. And I think it looks pretty cool. All right, let me knock out this, this last one. And then tomorrow we'll uh, paint and then assemble and install back on the Evolution 8. Working on cleaning up a little hardware. What I have here is the, the little screws that hold the, the little brake hardware inside of the Brembo calipers. And as you can see, this is what it looked like after cleaning it. Road debris, rust, brake dust. Anyway, it's, it's pretty nasty. It's pitted. But we can clean it up pretty good. And how I did this is using the same method as cleaning the big bolts. I uh, put this inside of a piece of vacuum tube like this. And this vacuum tube is 730 seconds. So here it is, 730 seconds. Just nip off a little bit. Put your screw inside of that. And then load this either onto a electric drill or a drill press, which is what I'm using. And then I use um, two grits of sandpaper, 180 grit. So I'm just using 180 grit sandpaper to knock off this these pits. And then I'll follow up with a 320 to polish. And you can go even higher if you want it up. Shinier looking little bolt but I think this is good enough for the application it's going to be and it's going to probably get pretty beat up again I am going to treat these with the shark hide just like I did the bolts and hopefully they won't corrode as badly all right I'm going to knock the rest of these out okay they're all cleaned up they're polished up next thing we're going to do is wipe them down with some acetone 
That way we remove any kind of oil, debris that's on there that would keep the shark hide rust protectant from working and adhering to the surface. So let me do that real quick. Go ahead and spray these heads down with some shark hide. And we'll get to reassembling the calipers. Next thing we're going to treat with the shark hide is going to be the little crossover brake line. So I'm going to spray the, the tube and then the little ends. I don't want to get all the way down on the threads, but the uh, exposed threads, I want to make sure I treat those. That way it doesn't corrode or rust. What we're doing now is masking the caliper, getting it ready for paint. I found a quick way that you can make a nice, neat little mask for the piston bores. All you have to do is grab one of the old seals and put some kind of tape, masking tape or packaging tape on it. And then just flip it over and use it as a as a guide and cut the extra tape off. Just take off the extra and miss the spot. And what you do is just push these back in there. And now you have a nice, neat little little mask. And you got to make sure you cover these holes too. So I'll be doing that next. That's it. Now all we got to wait for is a dry day and we'll clear coat them. All ready for paint. Just got to wait for a sunny day. Okay, we're all set up and ready for paint. Got the calipers all hanging. And these are just some uh, wires from the inside of a Cat5 cable. They're insulated. They're very flexible and strong enough to hold it all up. We'll be using some VHT high temperature caliper paint. This is a clear coat and it can withstand temperatures up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. I'm going to give this a good shake and then we'll get to painting. All right, guys, make sure that you're wearing some PPE. Uh, respirator, eye protection, face shield, long sleeves, and uh, something to protect your hands. I'm going to first spray some of the, it's all mixed up, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a little test spray on just this little can here to make sure that it's flowing properly. I have had bad cans of spray paint in the past, and it's no fun once you start getting into your project to discover that your paint has an issue. So do a test spray on something, make sure it's flowing properly, it looks right, the color's right, before you get uh, spraying on the, the final product.
All right, guys, that's it. I'm just going to leave it alone, let them dry. It came out good, no runs. And just as I hope, the logo did get a little darker, so that's good. A little sunny out here today. All right, so I'm super happy. I think they came out great. Wait for them to dry, and then we'll start putting them back together. All right, guys. The instructions talk about fully cure. You need to heat them to 200 degrees for one hour. This would happen normally under just light driving and braking. However, I want to make sure I don't get any brake fluid that's going to eat up the clear coat. So I'm going to go ahead and bake them in my oven. Don't do this unless your oven is in a well-ventilated area. This probably will give off some fumes that will be harmful. We'll be installing a kit from a company called Big Red. And you can pick this up online. You can do a search. Yeah, the kit will bring all the seals. It brings the... O-rings that go inside along with the new bleeder valves, caps, and also the, the, the piston, the replacement pistons. So I'll go ahead and unbag these. Now the rear, the rears, for some reason, they don't bring the pistons. But if you did need to replace the pistons, it would be the smaller piston for the, for the front set. They're the same size. I'm going to go ahead and unbag these. Okay, we're going to put our hardware back together. So let's get these guys where they need to go. We'll be using a little blue Loctite. And a T27 Torque. And you don't want to crank this down crazy, just snug. The Loctite is what's going to hold it in place. Now, I'm not sure if brake fluid is what you're supposed to use on these, but I noticed that this kit, and I've seen a lot of the guys online that are rebuilding these, they, they soak these in brake fluid, which I guess you could soak this in brake fluid. But the kit, Big Red, they bring this uh, brings this silicone grease. So I'm going to use the silicone grease because I think that that, that was the uh, the reason it's included in the kit. And uh, and then I'm sure when the whole thing gets filled with brake fluid, the brake fluid will break down the grease and it'll just be all filled with brake fluid. But it didn't make sense to me to get brake fluid all over this newly clear-coated caliper even if it's powder coated uh, still the brake fluid would 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 damage the the powder coat and the paint so i'm not i'm not gonna have any brake fluid anywhere near this while i'm assembling it when the system gets filled with the brake fluid then you know, the seals will be in place and it shouldn't leak out anyway i'm gonna just put a little of this a little bit of this on my finger and then just run it in there This is the big seal. Once you get it in place, you get a little white. All right, so that one's in. And I'm just going to grab a little bit of this lube. Same thing with these pistons. You want to get some lube on these pistons. I'm just going around the edge. Once you get them down in there, you just work your way around the, the dust seal and get it down real good. Seed it into its, into its groove. That's it. So that one's done. 
right, so now we'll just go grab the uh, the other half of that. All right, that's it. Now the seals are in. Next thing will be to put the two halves together. So let me reposition the camera and we'll get to that. Next thing we're going to do is put these two halves together. Now this is going to be the front caliper. What I'm going to use is a couple of the factory bolts that held the caliper to the, to the caliper bracket. So let me grab it and thread it on there. This was uh, another source of confusion for me. I couldn't find anywhere online that gave me the actual torque specs for the Brembo calipers, the ones that for these for these uh, big Allen bolts. After a little bit of searching, what I did find out is there's markings. There's markings on all these bolts. So if you notice, these two right here, it's hard to see in the camera. Let me turn the light on. Okay. So these two right here, these are a couple of eights. So this is 8.8. 8. Now what this is, is the grade of this bolt. And if you go to the bolt manufacturers websites they have a standard chart I checked several websites and the 8.8 .8 grade bolt along with the diameter of the bolt in this case this one is a, a 12 millimeter bolt and along with the thread pitch the thread pitch on this is 1.75 so a 8.8 .8 grade bolt 12 millimeter with a 1.75 thread pitch there's two values for torque on this bolt the first one is dry torque the dry torque is 88 foot pounds then there is a lubricated torque that torque is 66 foot pounds the manufacturer suggests that you use a medium viscosity oil for the lubricated torque and they recommend always a lubricated torque however since we are using steel fasteners to aluminum parts what I'm going to use is anti-seize lubricant that will serve two purposes. It will lubricate this fastener along with protecting it from chemically reacting with the aluminum. What happens when you bolt steel to aluminum is it will have a reaction, the two metals together, unless there is some type of anti-seize or oil that's applied to it. The manufacturer, when I took these apart, this bolt had anti-seize lubricant on this shaft and on this end here. You can, you might be able to see a little bit of the residue of it. So I'm going to go ahead and reapply the anti-seize lubricant. It came like this from Brembo. 
and it doesn't make sense to Loctite this. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos that show red Loctite on these bolts. I don't know why these weren't Loctited to begin with, and I am not going to Loctite them because it, it serves no purpose. Brembo did not do it this way, and I, I want to follow their lead. The anti-seize lubricant makes sense to me, and that's what I'm going to use. A little bit of anti-seize lubricant. A little bit of anti-seize lubricant goes a long way, guys. So you don't need to you don't need to cake it on or anything. Just a little bit like this. And then I'm gonna put a little bit on the shaft and I'll use a coffee filter to spread it out. All I'm going to do is this, okay? Same thing with this part. I just want to, just a light, light coat. Doesn't have to be real heavy or anything. It's a light coat. All right, guys, 66 foot-pounds. almost forgot we got to put the, the little crossbar on. Alright guys, gotta put the little crossbar on. And remember we're gonna need the flare wrench. Last thing we got to put on is the little, the little bleeder valves. Now we're going to install the hardware in the rear calipers. So we're going to use a little bit of blue Loctite. So here's our blue Loctite. And a T27 torque bit. And you don't want to get crazy tightening it, just snug it down. And the kit that we're going to use, the seal kit, is again from Big Red. We'll be reusing the original pistons. Make sure they're clean. And all we're going to be doing is lubricating and reinserting these seals into this bore. You can see right here. So it's going to go right in that little groove right there. Might be able to see it, maybe. It's kind of hard to catch it in camera because it's black. But there's a little groove right here. So this seal is going to go right in there. Now this kit comes with a, an assembly 
lubrication that we're going to use. What I'm going to do to apply it is I'm going to just use one of these Q-tips here. Now, the thing with the Q-tips, you got to be careful because they do have a, like a, they'll, they'll, they'll shed. So just keep an eye on that. And make sure that you're not getting a bunch of the material shedding inside of this little bore here. So that looks good. To insert the seal, all you're doing is you're pushing one side in with your thumb and you're keeping it in there, and then you're guiding the rest of it in with your with your other hand till it till it clips in. You see, so that, that one just snapped in. And then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get more of this lubricant with my finger. And continue to lubricate the, the tube, the little uh seal. Okay, so now that seal is lubricated. Next thing we'll be doing is putting the, the seal on top of the piston. So just grab your piston, seat your seal in the groove. So we're putting this, this uh, little piece of rubber right here, this edge, inside of this groove right here. So you can just slip it over the top. Just like that. Okay, so now that little thing is ready to go. Now all we got to do next is lubricate the piston using the same lubrication. So just, just around the edge and on the bottom. That's all we need. And we just drop it inside of its bore. Once you have it, once you have it in, in its board, just give it like a, a push side to side and it'll and it'll slide in. See how it just slid in there? And then once it's in, you're just gonna push it all the way in and seat this collar. So now I'm just gonna go around the edge and just seat this collar real good. Make sure it's all the way down. Okay, so that one's that one's ready to go. Now we're gonna get the next one. Same thing here. So we're gonna start with the hardware. And just tighten down with the T twenty seven. Now we're going to do the same with the, lubri the lubricant. We're going to get it down in that groove. See that snapped in? And then just side to side until it drops in. That's it. All right, so now we got both our halves done. <clears throat> now the next part is we're gonna replace the O-ring that joins these two halves together. So this next step, we're gonna be using the silicone grease that's included with the big red seal kit. Get some out of the packet. And then you want to apply it inside of this groove that's here. You're going to take a finger and you're going to hold the seal inside of the, the groove. So once you, once you get it in there, you're just going to hold it in place and then work the seal in with your other hand. So I'm just carefully going around the edge until it snaps into place. So right there. 
kind of hard to tell, but anyway. It snaps into uh, position. Now you can grab some more grease with your finger. Let's go around the inside edge. And then we're going to need our last two pistons. Get your little piston, get your seal. And once you get it in position, all we're going to do is just apply some pressure to it to push it down. Okay? So it's real, real simple. Just apply some pressure to it, and it goes down. And just push the, push the seal in. All right? I'm just working my hand all the way around the, the edge of the seal, making sure it's in all the way. And that's it. Alright, so that one's done. I'm going to do the same with this last one. So just get your grease in there. You can use your finger to spread it around, or you can use a little uh, paper towel or this little cotton ball thing. You just have to be careful with this, with this uh, cotton swab that the fibers don't get loose in there. Now take your seal, put one end of it in, hold it with your thumb, and then work the other edge in so it snaps in just like that. Lubricate it real good. Get your last piston. Just work it side to side till it goes in. That's it. That's all there is to it. So now we got both of these together. Next step would be to uh, reassemble them. So let me get the parts together, and then we'll go ahead and put these two halves back. All right, so for the rear... To determine the torque for the rear bolts, the same thing is going to apply. So as you remember, the, the front bolts, they were 8.8. .8. This one is also 8.8. .8. That's the grade of the bolt. And then this bolt is an 8 millimeter bolt. And the thread pitch is 1.25. I picked up a chart from Applifast is the, the company that's torque specs I'm using. They're a fastener company, and for these bolts lubricated, which is what they recommend, we're going to use anti-seize lubricant on the shaft, anti-seize lubricant on the threads, and uh, our torque is going to be 19.1 uh, foot-pounds per bolt, and that's uh, lubricated. So anyway, let me go ahead and put the anti-seize lubricant on these and get these two halves together. So we got our, our O-ring is in here. We've already added our O-ring. There it is. Now we just need to put the anti-seize lubricant on these bolts and reassemble. Hopefully we'll have just enough anti-seize lubricant to finish this job. All right, so we're just going to spread it evenly all the way around. Doesn't have to be real heavy or anything. A little goes a long way. And it'll spread out as, as it goes into the uh, threads. So just hold it in place. Get one of the bolts in. Short bolts go on the outside. One. Just get it going with your hand. You don't have to crank them down yet. All we're doing right now is just hand tightening them. We'll put them up on the vise and and torque them here in a minute. All right, so there it is. 
So now we just need to torque them down. We're going to use two of the bolts that originally held the caliper to the caliper bracket. We're going to use it through that piece of wood and we're going to bolt it to the caliper to hold it on the vise. All right, so 19 foot pounds. I like to start with the inside bolts first. So I'll just give them a little tighten, a little bit at a time. One, it's 19 foot pounds, guys. Next thing we want to do is put the bleeder valve on. So the kit does not bring new bleeder valves, so we'll be reusing the bleeder valves. So I'm going to give these a quick blowout with some air. Uh, make sure that there's no blast media or anything on the threads and then we'll go ahead and install these. So you want to make sure you put your little rubber thing on first, the cap. So there's our assembled caliper, it's ready to go. All we gotta do is finish up the other one and install it in the car. Came out good. They came out awesome. I am super excited with the way they look. They look amazing. Stripping it was a nightmare, but it was well worth it. These are the kind of results, guys, that you can get with your homemade vapor blast system. Some information and some time. see all the details were accounted for the hardware looks real good Anyway, something like this, guys, would cost you thousands of dollars in labor to pay someone to do. Think about starting your own home-based business, refinishing automotive parts. It does take a lot of work. I'm not going to sugarcoat it, but you can do just about anything you set your mind to do. With enough persistence and experience... You get these kind of results. I mean, I'm blown away by the results of this. I would have never imagined several years ago trying to get something like this out of a home shop. Just amazing. All right, guys. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Make sure to subscribe to the channel. Share the video with your friends. Leave me comments. I love reading the comments. I try to do my best to respond as soon as I see them. Thank you so much for all the support. The channel is growing, and as it continues to grow, I can continue to produce more videos, share what I've learned, and uh, the experiences that I've had with you guys.
God bless. Till next time, take care.